Welcome to Word Connect with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's Word. For more information and free downloads, please visit www.thepastormax.ng. Look at this. It says, uh, For Macedonia and Asia have been pleased to make a contribution for the poor among the saints in Jerusalem. So there were poor people in the saints in the church in Jerusalem. You know, some people, you know, they go to ask. He say, in those days, people sold what they have. Even the rich people, they sold what they have. And then they brought everything. And everybody did not. Yeah, that was, that was, that was, uh, that was an experience that happened. It wasn't something that was consistent over the years. Because if it was consistent over the years, we will not have a record in the Bible that there were poor people in Jerusalem. The church helped each other. But we don't try, and you, you got to pay attention to this, we don't try to make the rich feel guilty for having wealth. Because there's a way we try to use our poverty and, and push it in the face of a wealthy person to look like, listen, if you really care about me, you will share whatever you have equal. How many of you know what I'm talking about? So you, you must recognize that there were poor saints in Jerusalem. And Jesus himself said, the poor you would always have among you. So poverty is, is a constant. You just have to learn the truth of God's word and, and overcome it. Okay, so uh, he says, yes, they, are, they were pleased to do so. They, 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 they did it willingly. People have to be pleased to give. It has to be uh, from their hearts. There's nothing like receiving an offering from someone, oh, who really wants to bless you. Hmm? Have, you have you ever, some of you growing up, have you ever begged your younger sister for biscuits? Hmm? Or not younger sister, somebody close. Say, can I have biscuits? Say, no. Can I have? No. Say, ah, I will not allow you to watch cartoon. Say, can I have? No. Say, when rain fall, I will cover you. you will not. And then you know what happens? You either start giving empty promises or start threatening. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay, anytime you want to watch cartoon again, I will remove the plug. And then the person says, oh yeah, take, take, take. You know that's not pleasing. Is that pleasing? And that, you know sometimes that's what we do in church. How many of you know sometimes that's what we do in church? If you give today, God will open heaven. God, in fact, your giving will make God to stand up. <laughs> you know? And when that doesn't work, say, if you don't give, and, and, and the gospel does not go forward. God will judge you. <laughs> you know, oh yeah, God, take. If, if you want to stand, stand. If you want to judge, oh yeah, take. You know, that's not New Testament giving. That's a, and that's why people are complaining about tithe. I'm going to teach you something on Sunday. Tithing from a place of victory. All right? Yeah, if, if I don't tithe, will God cost me? Will, if it is because of cost or no causes, keep your money. I'm going to teach on that on Sunday. Tithing from a place of victory. No giving should be a burden to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As a minister of the gospel, I've made it a priority and in my life, and God is my witness, I have never forced anyone, I'll never compel anyone to give. And I'll say it all the time. I don't say it out of pride or anything. If the finances for the work does not come, it's a sign to tell us that, yeah, boy, your season is over, go do something else. And that's the truth. When the brook dries up, God will show another way. If God doesn't show another way, then it's time to take me home. And it's simple. It's not, there are no hard and fast rules about this thing. You know, sometimes in an, in an attempt to become a very popular minister, you'll try to generate money and grow the ministry through money, not through the grace of God. I've seen people uh, struggle to go on television. Struggle, struggle to go on television. I remember a couple of months ago we were on, you know, we're still on TV, but then we, we cut down some of our slots. And I was telling our partner who's, who's paying for that, I say, I think we should get off TV and focus on something else. He says, no, let's not go off totally. Let's keep some program. Let's keep, that's what it is. It's the person trying to keep you there in that sense. It's not you trying to keep yourself there. And say, ah, pastor, he said, no, try something. Try, if you cannot pay one space, more, 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 we must stay there. Don't do that. Don't do that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I said, are you hearing what I'm saying? In ministry, there are, time, there, are, there are seasons. 
There are certain seasons the Lord will allow you to do certain things. And certain seasons the Lord will want you to change your direction. Praise God. Let's get here. It says, and they are indebted to them. There's a spiritual principle here. It says, for if the Gentiles have shared in their spiritual things, they are indebted to minister to them also in material things. I'll talk about this when I talk about not muzzling the ox. It, it, you know, Paul didn't just talk about this in respect to pastors and leaders. He says, listen, if the Gentiles receive the gospel through the church in Jerusalem, he says, then they owe them their material support. Hallelujah. And this is something Christians need to understand. That where you are being fed spiritually, the, the person who is teaching you the word of God, it, 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 you see, you, you are indebted to that person materially. The scripture says it. The scripture says it. Now, I know, like I said, some pastors have taken this and made everyone to be like, you owe me. You know, Paul says, we know our rights. He says, but for the sake of the gospel, we will not exercise our right. You know what Paul said here? He says, if the Gentiles have shared in their spiritual things, if they have shared in the gospel, he says, listen, they are indebted to minister to them in what? Their material things. Why do we give to our local church? Our local church ministers to us spiritual things. We are indebted to the local church material things. Why do we minister to ministers of the gospel? Pastors, they are, they are, we have shared in their spiritual things. We'll talk about that. We want to talk about not muzzling the ox, but we just want to go through here. So you see why, or the motivation uh, by which the giving in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, the premise, the foundation by which 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 8 um, was written. So let's go back now to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. So I hope you have all the perspective now. Why they were giving, how they were giving, what they were giving for. Do you understand that? So what were they giving for? To the saints, not just the saints. Which specific saints were they giving for? The poor saints were? In Jerusalem, how were they to give or what, how were they to get their offerings ready? They were to, not just set aside, they were to set aside and save. You, you have to pay attention to details. So it's not like you set aside and later you decide to to put it aside inside your stomach. No. You set aside and you save for that purpose. That means their giving was deliberate. Everybody say their giving was deliberate. Now, I, 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 are, we, are we okay with that? All right. So, we go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Now, what I want you to do when you go back home today, read the whole chapter. Okay? Every Wednesday we'll be dealing with it verse by verse. So, let's go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. So we are in verse 1. Now, brethren, <clears throat> we wish to make known to you the grace of God which has been given in the churches of Macedonia. Verse 2. That in a great ordeal of affliction. The word affliction there in the Greek is thlipsis. T-H-I-L-I-P-S-I-S. It's used 41 times in the New Testament. I'm going to explain to you. The, the great ordeal of affliction. The abundance of joy. Paul is contrasting something here. He says, these guys have a deal, a deal, a great ordeal of affliction. And then, they've got an abundance of joy. Out of their deep poverty... They overflow in the wealth of liberality. You know what? This must be the grace of God. To see a poor man who has joy, it's got to be grace. You think so? Do you think so? You don't think so? <laughs> if you are in deep affliction, do you think you would have abundance of joy? Come on, church. If you are in deep affliction, do you think you would have abundance of joy? So if someone is in deep affliction and has abundance of joy, what do you think is at work in his life? The grace of what? Of God. Now, if you are in deep affliction, do you think... No, no, no. If you are in deep poverty... Do you think you will overflow in liberality? 
<laughs> you see that laughter that you laughed? The laughter that this Bible is on its own. The, the poverty is not just poverty. It's a deep one. You understand that? The guy said, Paul says, these people are in deep poverty, but they overflow in the liberality of their wealth. And this has to be the grace of God. You see, kingdom generosity must be out of the outflow of God's grace. You see, this thing about stressing people to give. Huh? <laughs> if the grace of God does not move a man, forget it. Allow the grace of God to influence people to give in ministering to you. You've got to rely on the grace of God. That's one part. You have to respond to the grace of God because certain times in your own life, things might be tough for you and the Lord is speaking to you about giving, about sowing, about releasing. It's like the, the, the widow of Zarephath. She had her last meal, but the scripture tells us that the Lord had commanded her to give to, to the prophet. The Lord had commanded her to give to the prophet. That can only be the grace of God. And that's why sometimes it is not proper for us to teach those things as, in, as it were, probably like principles in that sense. Because sometimes people act on these principles without the grace of God at work in their life. And when the results do not come, they are amazed. Because the Lord spoke to Elijah and the Lord spoke to who? To the widow. So the Lord didn't just speak to only the man of God. So if the Lord speaks to me about you giving sacrificially, the grace of God also has to be at work in your life speaking to you. So when we release that together, come on, our faith, our mutual faith, Paul says, releases the harvest. Praise God. Now, the word, let's, let's, look at, let's do a word study on that. Thank you, Lord. The word affliction, it's, it's the word thalipsis, like I said. It means to crush, to press together, anguish, burden. It, it is not a light trouble. It wasn't, it wasn't a light trouble. Uh, in those days in, in, in England, if someone is, is uh, guilty of an offense, this is the concept of telepsis. They would lay you down and put a heavy uh, substance on you, like a heavy metal or a heavy box, to crush you to death. That's the, that's the idea of telepsis. They were crushed. They were in that kind of deep, poor, affliction, persecution. But out of that, the grace of God at work in their heart responded in their liberality. Now, let's look at something. Let's, let's look at, you know, we talked about some of these churches he mentioned at the churches in, Thessalon uh, in Thessalonians, right? When we talk about the geography of, of, when he says the churches of Macedonia, we said there were churches in Philippi, Thessalonians, and Berea. Now, let's look at the, some, some things that were written about the churches in Thessalonica. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. And verse 6. First Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 6. You also, he was writing to the saints in Thessalonica. He says, you also became imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much tribulation with the joy of the Holy Ghost. How did they receive the word? In much tribulation. But what, what was the source of joy? The Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now go to 1 Thessalonians 2.14. For you, brethren, have became, become imitators of the churches of God in Christ that are in Judea, because you're imitating them. For you also endured the same sufferings at the hands of your own countrymen, even as they did for the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets, and drove us out. They are not pleasing to God, but hostile to all men. So, when these guys in Macedonia, the guys in Thessalonia, when they received the word, they didn't receive the word in the comfort of an air-conditioned building, you know, live streaming, 
<laughs> and all of this. They received the word in much persecution and much tribulation. The Bible says they, they, the people that were amongst them when they received the word are hostile. And that's not the time you want to talk of generosity. They received the word amidst great tribulation, amidst great hostility. You know, today we must, we must know that we are a privileged generation to receive the word without persecution. Now look at what it says. So, the word ellipsis is a strong term which does not refer to minor inconveniences but to real hardship. Medical ellipsis was used for the pulse or pressure. It's like the pressing together of grapes, crushing grapes, so that the grape vine will come out, the grape wine will come out. So, when he says that out of their deep affliction, he was talking about people who gave as they were pressed, as they were burdened. This was, and that's why he, he, he identifies the grace of God in their life at first. That's why he identified the grace of God in their life at first. The word ellipsis is used 45 times in the New Testament. It is translated 14 times as affliction, inflicting on a person something that is hard to bear. It's translated six times as affliction. <clears throat> it's translated one time as anguish. It's translated twice as distress, the state of being in a great trouble. It's translated one time as persecution and this persecution is a harassment in a manner designed to injure to grief or to afflict so this is persecution with an intention to cause grief so these guys they i'm trying to tell you that they didn't give with any iota of comfort <laughs> are you hearing this and that's why Paul had to use them as an example to the Corinthian church. He said, you know what those churches are going through? See what they are going through. And they have collected. You guys, you're not going through anything. And you're just laid back. Sometimes it's the people who don't have more that are generous to the kingdom. Hmm? Out of their little. You remember that? Let's, let's read a story about that. Mark 12. You know, this is verse-by-verse verse study. So any verse we stop, we'll stop today and continue. If it takes us the whole next two months to go through this, we'll finish it. Mark chapter 12. I want you to, what I want to do is, I want to patiently teach this 2 Corinthians chapter 8 so that it's engraved in your spirit. Once you know 2 Corinthians chapter 8, all over your head, you can just tell, oh, wow, and put the story. Where did I say Shaton to? Mark chapter what? 12, verse what? Did I give you the verse? And you don't know the verse? The widow's might. Find the verse. All of you always say, ah, please manage my widow's might. Don't ever say that statement again. Number one, you're not a widow. <laughs> I'm just joking. But you know, people say manage my widow's might when they give you something small. That's a wrong interpretation of that, that scripture. If you say, oh, pastor, this is my widow's might, what you're saying is that you have emptied your whole life savings in my hand. Never refer to the offering you have in your hand as your widow's might. That's not your widow's might. You're giving out of your surplus. That's a wrong... You are trying to associate with this woman when you are not in her class. You're not in the same WhatsApp group. Hmm? <laughs> 21st century Christians left the group. <laughs> Look at this. Um, Mark chapter verse 41. And he sat down opposite the treasury. Jesus sat and opposite the offering box. You know, imagine today people want to give and I pick a chair and I said, come and give here. Say, Pastor, what are you doing there? You like money too much. <laughs> Jesus sat down opposite the treasure. Jesus was, a, was, a, was an exciting man. I wanted to say Jesus was a funny man. But I, I, I use exciting. He sat down opposite the treasury and began observing how people were putting money into the treasury. Look at what Jesus was doing. Holy Jesus was checking the alert. It's like, pam, pam. So I say, hold on, hold on. Let me check. <laughs> Two, five, okay. <laughs> and then he says, and many rich people were putting in large sums. Oh, thank God for rich people who give large sums. Large sums are needed. Are you hearing this? Never think in your life something is too big for the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know, you know, some of you, if some of us, let me not use you, some of us, if, I, if we come now 
and he said, let's give offering and you're counting and you count 10,000 and you want to put it in the offering box. You know, many things will run through your mind. Especially if you're a woman. Ah, that is four laps of chicken. Seven heads of goats. Woo, that's a pot of soup. <laughs> that's the devil talking. You know, money looks big in church. Hmm? You know money looks big in church? Very big. You know how I know that money looks big in church? You know, there are people who would leave church right now and go home, go on their way home, and they would buy suya to eat. Hmm? 1,000 naira. How many of you think it's possible? Huh? But you know, sometimes that, that same person, if he wants to give offering in church, and he brings it up. <laughs> and thank God now we sing where we are collecting offerings. Say, thank God the song is still going on. And looks at it, and it's 1,000. Then he puts his hand back, say, hold on. <laughs> and then checks and see 200 naira. Come on, tell me, in your honest opinion, what do you think that person is going to give? Yeah, you guys are very honest. But you know, when you stand before that suya man, and you bring 200 naira, you bring 1,000 naira, something will tell you 200 naira suya will not be enough. Things are expensive. <laughs> How many of you, come on, come on now. How many of you know what I'm saying is true? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because listen to this, because when you go to spend for yourself, the devil doesn't have a problem with that. Are you hearing this? Even if you are spending for your girlfriend, you go, there are many phones. Say this one is, I, ah, no, 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 no. This, my baby is too hot for this kind of phone. And he say, let's buy phone for pastor. Say, why? Why must it be Samsung? Why? And there are poor people everywhere. You know what, you know what's happening right there? Mammon and God speaking. I've got to deal with this all the time. Because the fallen man does not have a problem with self. And I'm not saying, you, you've got to hear my heart. The whole of this month, please hear my heart. You know, I don't teach on money all the time. So I'm taking a special disclaimer. This month, we will deal with this money talk. So after this, we'll forget about it again. See, sometimes where the Lord leads us. But you know this thing is every time you've got to spend for yourself, there isn't a problem with the money. But every time you're ministering to someone else, or you're giving, then that thing starts rising. So you've got to deal with that. But then they throw in large sums. So these guys were givers. I'm glad about the large sum. The large sum helps a lot. 32. A poor widow. A poor widow. So the woman was poor and she was a widow. No husband. Came and put in two small copper coins. She didn't put in two copper coins. She put in two small copper coins. You know, when I read the Bible, I pay attention to these things. A poor widow with two copper coins, which amounted to a cent. Look at the calculation. So she gave a cent. So it's like saying, we have an offering, and somebody gave 100,000, and somebody gave 1 million, and somebody gave 300,000, and somebody gave 6 million, and somebody gave $45,000. And then a, a widow came, and she gave 1,000 naira. Let's be honest, let's be honest. Who is the pastor going to give an award? Huh? Do you realize that sometimes in the body of Christ, we have led people wrongly because we rewarded the quantity and not the sacrifice? You know, somebody can give you six million, the guy has 300 million. In his mind, he has even forgotten how much he gave you. And here you are, wow, we are going to celebrate the highest and the best giver of the universe. And we give him an award. How much did he give? He gave six million. And, uh, and someone thinks, oh God, we, we want to build. I can't. I can only afford a bag of cement. And he comes in with a bag of cement and rides in and comes in and drops his bag of cement. And say, oh, pastor, somebody broke a bag of cement. Say, bag of cement. Say, yeah. See, does he think we're playing here? 
<laughs> is this thing we're playing? He said, where did he drop it? He said, by the gate. Said, you didn't allow him to enter. He said, hey, good, good. We're not joking here. We have a big vision. And heaven looks at that man and says, that's the greater giver. And the earth celebrates this man and says, this is the biggest giver. Be careful not to celebrate what earth is celebrating and heaven is despising. Are we against giving big sums? Realize that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about how we rate giving. So look at what he says. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which amount to a cent. And let me say something there. I mean, it's like today we're just going to deal with only verse, just this affliction. Next Wednesday we continue. You, rem- you see something? Never despise your seed because of what others are giving. You know, sometimes we say, well, let's partner. Let's partner with the gospel. And someone say, Pastor, it's only 1000 every month I have. Get it in. Get it in. It's part of it. You know, one day I was talking to someone, and, and, I said, uh, and, and the person was talking to me about partnership. He says, I really like to partner, but I don't have. I, I just have 1000 naira every month to partner. We're talking about uh, uh, ministry partnership. And I just gave a simple example. I said, if they give, give 300000 and you give 1000 Right? Or let me use a small figure. If the partnership for the month is 10,000 and you give 1,000, I ask, how much will the ministry have at the end of the month? <laughs> this is simple math. If everybody gives 10,000 and you add 1,000, how much are we going to have at the end? 11,000. If everybody gives 10,000 and you don't give your 1,000, how much are we going to? 10,000. Do you think we can do more with 11,000 than 10,000? So you don't deny the kingdom the opportunity of that extra 1,000. Do you realize that if we're going to buy a microphone for 11,000 and we have 10,000 and we go to the microphone shop, they would likely not sell it to us. But if you give that extra 1,000 and we walk to the microphone shop and it's 11,000, how many of you know that that your extra 1,000 actually got the, the got us in to get that microphone? If this woman had said, oh, look at the large sums people are giving. Look at how much people are giving. Oh, God, dear God, I don't have anything to give. Let me keep my two cents. We won't be reading about her today. How many times have we kept our one cent and we've denied Jesus the opportunity of using us as an example of great givers? We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus two three four. 805-888-7575 Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video format. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805-888-7575 or send us an email office at pastormax.ng also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng. God bless you.